Welcome everyone. Today we continue on in our Intro to Reduce series. In this video, we're going to talk about how to flatten an array of arrays into a single one-dimensional array. As always, the prerequisites for this video are just having a basic understanding of JavaScript as well as ES6 style arrow functions. First, note that I have a variable called matrix, which is a two-dimensional array of numbers. I also have a helper function called log. That's just an alias of console.log. How could we flatten this array into a single list of numbers? Well, there's actually a newer method on the array prototype called flat that can do this for you. I'm unsure of the browser support, but at the time of this video, I believe it to be supported in most modern browsers. But as always, we're going to use reduce to reinvent the wheel. All right, so we know that this flatten function is going to take an array of arrays, and we're going to flatten it one level. I'll do a later video on how to flatten an n-dimensional array using reduce. So let's scaffold out this flatten function. Great. Now, usually this is the point where I start thinking about what the reducing function needs to look like. Let's see. Well, we know that we need to add the elements of the inner arrays to an accumulating array. Keep that in your mind for a moment, but let's do a quick recap before moving on. In my video, Intro to Reduce, I talked about how a reducing function is similar to an add function. A reducing function takes some elements and smashes them together using some operation. The operation you need to use is dependent upon the data type you're operating upon. For example, with numbers, you could use addition or multiplication, etc., to reduce two or more numbers into a single number. For example, 1 plus 1 is a number, and 2 plus 3 is a number, 2 times 3 is a number, you get the idea. With Booleans, we could reduce really any number of trues and falses using the um, logical operators. True and true resolves to true, for example, or false and true gives us false. So remember, we're going to need to be able to add arrays together. We can use the concat method for that. But to further the intuition that a reducing function it's just a glorified add function. Let's create a helper function called concat. This looks an awful lot like an add function, doesn't it? I encourage you to create helpers like this whenever possible. You get the benefit of having small, composable functions, and it can help reveal some underlying patterns you could be missing. Well, seeing as the concat function adds arrays, it seems like we can draw an equivalence relationship between our concat function and the reducing function that we need to pass in to reduce. This is important to note. When two things are equivalent, they should be interchangeable. Now, this is dependent upon the strictness of the equivalence, but for our purpose, concat and the reducing function we need are functionally the same. So let's go ahead and pass the concat function in as our reducing function. Okay, so remember in past videos, the way we determined our accumulator is based on two things. It will often be the same data type as our expected output, and generally it will be the identity element for the given set of elements combined with the operation you're using. So let's parse that out for a second. We know that we expect an array as output, and we discussed in past videos that under concatenation, the identity element for arrays is an empty array. So let's use that. All right, so let's give this flatten function the, uh, well, the old college try and just log it to the console. Well, look at that. All of the elements are in one array. Well, hopefully you've gained a deeper understanding of how Reduce works with this video. I plan to make plenty more videos in this series so that by the end, you'll have one of the most versatile tools in your toolkit, Reduce. So to reiterate, let's look at how this flatten function works again. So let's add some space here. Okay, so the flatten function takes an array. It's going to reduce this array into another array. And we know that because the accumulator is an empty array. For the reducing function, we're going to use concat. So if you notice here, we have this array one, array two parameter, and then we just concat them together. But again, sometimes I like to rename parameters just so I can get a, an understanding of what's going on. 
So I'm going to rename this, whoops, I'm going to re rename this parameter here, ACK, that will be short for accumulator. And this is going to be val, that will be short for value. And let's change them out. Okay. So if we look here, this really looks no different than the, um, the, the normal reducing functions that we've been using, right? They are functionally the same. And that's what I mean by saying that the reducing functions and an add function are kind of similar, right? They take uh, a list of elements and then they, uh, they simplify them into an element of the same type of the set that you're using. All right, I guess that does it. So if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. And if you liked the video, please consider subscribing, liking, and hitting that bell icon. Thanks, everyone.